Morning, how you doing? <laughs> Morning folks. How you doing Sally? We'll just give everyone a few minutes before we begin, we'll hopefully begin at 10 o'clock. How you doing, Hilda? Hilda? Emily? Angela? How you doing? Anne-Marie Elliott? Fantastic. How you doing, Jennifer? Hopefully you can all hear me. <laughs> Barbara, Monica, Gwyneth, Angela, chucking it down. Well, it's quite nice here, to be honest with you. I'm in Birmingham. You can probably tell that by the accent. <laughs> How you doing, Emily? Geraldine? Jill? Shirley? Morning, folks. How you doing, Pat? Morning Kay. Morning Kay. Sounds like a breakfast seal, doesn't it? <laughs> How you doing Jennifer? You're in Shea, oh sure. Rachel, how you doing? Morning. How you doing Louise? Well, my location is in Birmingham. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm in Birmingham. In a little place called Kings Norton. Which is not too far out from the city centre itself. Shropshire. Fantastic. So I'm just going to give another minute and then we'll begin <clears throat> have you all got your cup of tea or is it just me morning Jenny Jennifer Kings Norton no it's more central uh, to Birmingham city centre. Well done Jilly, skinny your teeth. <laughs> so, good haircut, what do you reckon? <laughs> you could be right, 5 99 bargain. <laughs> All right, folks, so uh, we're going to begin. So maybe just close your eyes a little bit. Just settling into that space wherever you are. So we're amongst friends. You and I were in good company. So we give thanks that we're gathered here today and we ask that this place be filled with love, light and friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through each of us. And as your crown chakra opens and you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your entire being and feel the balance and harmony within the body and the earth energy rises up through the soles of the feet to the base chakra and feel your connection to the universal source of unconditional love 
balanced by nurturing, protecting love of Mother Earth. Just close your eyes. Harry Edwards prayer. May I be thankful for all the blessings I have and grant me relief from pain and sickness and protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me that I may be conscious of their presence and so receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity and let me be conscious of your strength in times of need. Grant me the confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do that which is only right and true. I pray that good guidance and influence will inspire all your people to be as brothers, one to the other, and that the peace shall endure for all time. Hopefully, folks, uh, I've just had a message there that you can't see me. Um, let me just check. Uh, hopefully, you can you can hear me. Um, yeah, so hopefully you can. So anyway, we're going to give distant healing. So again, if you want to close your eyes and just think of those people you love and those people you care about, and we ask now that all the people's names who we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for their highest good. And we also request their healing for their family, their friends and people for whom they've requested distant healing. And for just one moment, we'll be still and know that the healing is being sent. May all those we think of and all those in the healing book, may they all be placed in the healing light and receive that for which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. And our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to all our friends in spirit. The Sanctuary Prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers that through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me might be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought and bringing me closer and in harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose and for those who are sick or in darkness of despair who do not know the help that can reach them from spirits I pray that this awareness come to them soon. So, folks, I was driving in this morning and I was um, thinking about our mum. And um, <clears throat> my mum was a great woman. Um, and she really did encourage me to go into the holistic therapies. So, when I was 26, I was ill, uh, and from that illness, I sought another way. I went into complementary therapies, but before that, I used to be a bricklayer and a builder, so it was a far stretch from um, what I was doing. So if somebody said, like, one day you'll be doing spiritual healing and aromatherapy, I'd say you were so far removed from where I was. But the truth is, like all of us, it seems that there's a divine purpose, a divine plan, and I wonder if we could only just trust that. 
But I want to show you something. And it's this old clock which I've got in my room. And uh, this was taken out of my mum's bedroom uh, when she passed away. Uh, it's a really old clock, but I'll keep it here. And the alarm doesn't work or nothing like that on it, or so it seemed. And where I, where I am now uh, is, a, is a natural health centre which, I, which I'm in, um, which I work in and, and run. Anyway, this clock has been in my room for, for years really, you know, uh, since mum passed. And about two years, two, three years in, I got a phone call from the estates manager and he said, um, <clears throat> I have to go into your room this morning. I said, okay, why? He said, because uh, I could hear an alarm going off and this old alarm clock, which doesn't work, <laughs> didn't work like the alarm, was ringing. Um, and I said, oh, right. I said, uh, it, it hasn't worked. And then I realised it was on my mum's birthday. So it, it, it had worked once and that was on my mum's birthday and it hasn't worked since. Don't you think that's an amazing coincidence? Um, and I, those coincidences that show up in our life, those kind of random synchronicities, um, most of the time, I don't know about you, but I've followed that paper trail. Um, and I want to tell you a story. And it was about, uh, I've called it, I bowed down before Jesus. And I'm going to read it as I wrote it some years ago. So I was treating a woman uh, years ago who told me about her mum. Uh, and spoke of her near-death experience and so I went over to see her and this is what she told me she, she said I was watching the TV on a Sunday afternoon and then I walked into the kitchen and I bent down and it was almost as if I'd been hit over the head and I called my husband and he helped me get up and when he did I was dragging my right foot I was sent to Dudley Road Hospital for observation but was sent out the next day and then I was sent home for the next two weeks, nothing happened. And then she said I felt terrible, and then it subsided. We had a holiday planned and we went and travelling was okay, and then I had another headache. We arrived at the holiday and I thought it would pass off me. And then we went for a meal and came back, and then we went to bed and I didn't sleep all night. She said I was just so anxious. I don't know why, she said it was just, just there, it was over me. And when I got up, I went to open the curtains and I collapsed and I was unconscious for a few moments. The doctor came and they took her to hospital and they said, sent her for a brain scan. And then they decided to move her to another hospital and then they had to do an operation. She said, when I was waiting for the operation, I was in a room of my own and I began to sleep. And she said, it was then I had a vision of Jesus Christ in front of me. She said, I was kneeling down in front of him, looking up at him, and woven into the, woven into the pure and beautiful white life, white full length robe was a gold cross. And she said, I said, please let me live because of my little girl. Her daughter was two years old at the time. She said, and he put his hands on my shoulders and said, you will live. Then she awoke. The operation was a success and the hemorrhage had been stopped and that was 34 years ago and she was clear today about the vision she saw and heard. She later told me from that downwards whenever she was a little fed up she'd go out somewhere and God would always put someone in front of me worse off and I asked what she meant and she said I would always see someone who was in a wheelchair or wheelchair or unwell or someone who was worse off than me. And it was though I'm always reminded of the value of my life and the grace I've been given of still being alive. And you will have to read in this, you'll always see, God will always put someone in front of you worse off than you. And in the same way, those other coincidences and synchronicities just appear. But the, the truth is, when I met this lady, and she's still alive now, so, I mean, that was probably about... 15 years ago and when I spoke to her and there was something about this this old lady and I, I know she's alive now because I still see her daughter um, there was something about she said I bowed down to God and, and he put his hands on me 
And I don't know what it was about the resonance of what she said, but it went right through me. And so I hear truth, I guess, like a lot of you guys, I hear truth slightly different. And she'd never forgot it, and she'd never changed her story. And um, I just thought that was an amazing, uh, an amazing encounter. And I wonder how many of you have had similar accounts, encounters in your own way those little synchronicities and coincidences. And I heard a great statement, and I, I know it came from Einstein, who was a spiritual man. I think he was a genius, obviously, but he was a very spiritual man. And he said this, he coined the phrase, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. I think that's amazing. Um, and back to this little clock, where well, that went off, and my mum kind of encouraging me and when a lot of people said, oh, you should go back to work, back to the building. But my life had changed. This thing had happened to me and I was never quite the same. Um, my nature hasn't probably changed. Um, but certainly my beliefs and my searching uh, had. Uh, but the interesting thing about my mum was um, her mum was an alcoholic. And she left my mum... Uh, when she was young with all the other kids to bring up all the kids so she her mom just left she was an alcoholic but I always think my mom was such a good mom um, because she knew what it was like to be on the other end of lack on the other end of nothing and, and she made sure she never did that with us because as far as I can see we tend to follow patterns you know from our past or we have the awareness and then the uh, what's the word Either we follow it or we change it, basically. And she changed it. And her, her whole life become an act of forgiveness by the way she led her life. And I remember a, a great quote from Mother Teresa who said, let your life become your prayer. And you know, so many people are so busy talking. And, and really, the honest truth is, if we could act out our life and that life that we live could be our prayer, I know it's not easy. But I think that's a far better statement for each of us to aspire to. Um, my mum's mum, uh, my mum's dad was a healer, and he used to have a, a corn on his hand. And although I never met him, he come through at different times through spirits. But she said he was a kind and gentle man, um, and he would just have this ability to lay his hands on people. Um, and he used to say to them, so mum said and that the pain, whatever it is, was going into this corn. So some part of him and some part of that legacy, I believe, was passed on to me. And I'm very fortunate and privileged, really, to, um, to be part of that story, part of that journey. So I wanted to do a little meditation with you and um, about meeting your guardian angel, just on the back of that little story, perhaps. And so... If you want to get yourselves nice and comfortable. <clears throat> and we're going we're gonna to do this little meditation. So hopefully the link will stay good and true. And gently close your eyes. And take a slow deep breath in. And as you breathe out, let go of any tension. And feel yourself sinking into the surface you're resting upon. Becoming more comfortable and more relaxed. And take another slow deep breath in. And release your thoughts, your worries, your anxieties. Letting them drift away. And take another slow, deep breath in. And know that in this moment, everything's okay. Everything will be okay. And consider a time when you first met someone important to you. And the circumstances around that meeting. And imagine a kind and loving presence there with you. 
standing by, making sure this meeting took place, part of your divine path. Your guardian angel was there, pulling strings and making arrangements, creating coincidences and synchronicities and orchestrating all the events necessary to bring you together with that person. And notice the feeling of the divine intervention, the blessing that surrounds that meeting. From I on Hanai. Consider a sign and time where you made a decision that had a positive impact on your life. And remember the feeling of knowing you needed to do this. Imagine your guardian angel with you there, brightening your awareness, helping you focus on what mattered most ensuring you made the best possible decision. Your angel could see far down the road and knew what you needed. He or she was right there with you, making sure you were heading in the right direction. Consider one time in your life when circumstances led you to something special you wanted or needed perhaps, without even knowing you needed it beforehand. The right thing at the right time seemed to appear in your life. Spoken word, a kind gesture, or even something physical that you really wanted, appeared in your life. See your guardian angel there, coordinating the events, standing by, making sure that things fell your way, so you'd receive exactly what you needed, just when you needed it. And consider a time when you were concerned and uncertain about something, perhaps about yourself or someone near to you, and prayed for help. Envision your guardian angel by your side, hearing your prayers and taking them directly to God on your behalf. Through prayer you will believe and through belief you will love and through love you will serve. Whatever the outcome of that situation, know that your angel was there for you, helping to ensure that God's will was delivered. And God, your angel's been right there for you from the moment you were born, stayed by your side, and will continue to assist you throughout your life. He or she is a faithful servant, born of God's love, and devoting entirely to helping you for your highest good. Your guardian angel is right with you now, here right in front of you, around you. Your angel knows you seek a deeper connection with them and is projecting their image, their presence into your higher mind so you might know them more closely, feel that presence with you. Without stress or strain, Simply relax into your heart and allow your imagination to be set free. Let whatever images seem to come before you appear in your mind's eye without trying to modify or edit what you see. And ask your angel, show me your face. And just breathe and relax and envision and sense that presence. 
whatever does or doesn't come up in your mind's eye is fine, it's okay. Simply open and allow yourself to freely see. Let whatever comes into your mind be real for you and allow it to fill in and become richer. Even if you see nothing at all, continue to hold your focus and be open. And this is the practice of receiving from the divinity itself. There is no way to fail because all you need is an open heart and patiently wait. And do this with me now for a moment or two. Feel the presence of that angel with you. Allow it to soften you. Soften your heart. Feel that kindness, that generosity of spirit around you, comforting you. Know that you're not alone. It's impossible for you to be alone. Think about the story that I just told you. About that lady when she said she bowed down before God. And continue to hold your focus as you bow your head slightly forward. As you take a moment to give thanks to God for your guardian angel. And hold out your hands before you and feel your angel touching you, sending you a gentle wave of loving energy. And take some time to open, to breathe and receive this love, this kindness. And if there's anywhere in your body that hurts or needs healing, ask your guardian angel to send love and light and healing there, now. And your guardian angel is networked with all the other angels and saints and masters, and even Harry himself, and the energies around you, and all others throughout heaven. And ask your guardian angel to bring another presence to you now. To connect you with and in love. And this may be someone you know or wish to know better. A situation in your life that needs to be resolved. Or someone new to assist you through the next stage of your journey. And the journey was always about the return to the light and the connection to the light. You may ask for someone specific or allow your guardian angel to bring whomever would be best for you right now. And take some time to breathe and open your awareness and receive your visitor now. And now ask your guardian angel to take the message of love or healing from you to someone you know. And tell your angel 
what you'd like to convey and give them a moment to deliver that message from your heart to the heart of your friend or loved one or a situation that needs resolving now. And ask your guardian angel if they've carried out any message for you in return. And ask your guardian angel to bring a blessing of love and healing from high, from the divinity itself, directly to you now, wherever you are in the room that you're in and see and feel your room filling with heavenly divine light you may even smell a beautiful scent experience a wonderful feeling of softness of love and peace the greatest ambassador for change in oneself and take a moment to allow this experience to expand as you simply receive love from above. You've asked your guardian angel to assist you in many ways today and in doing so you've grown closer to them in spirit and take a moment to Open your heart as wide as you can. And be in that state of loving gratitude with your guardian angel now. And feel God's love pouring from their heart into yours. And accept and receive that goodness, that kindness, that unconditional love. And cast your mind forward in time as you envision your guardian angel standing right by you. Protecting you. And serving you with God's love day after day and night after night for the rest of your life. Imagine yourself opening up more and more to the angel's presence. Ask that, ask that you might be helped to notice all the miracles all the coincidences and synchronicities, large and small, being delivered to you in perfect timing. It will soon be time to bring this inner journey to a close. But first, take a moment to envision your angel before you one more time and see and feel or simply know of their presence with you. And thank your guardian angel for their blessing and give them yours. And bring your awareness gently back into your physical surroundings. From the point of light, within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. And light is now anchored on earth. And from the point of love within the heart of God, and love has come forth into the hearts of men, love has returned to earth. And from the centre where the will of God is known and purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and love and serve. And from the centre which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out and cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. And take your time and when you feel ready, open your eyes and Feel awake and alert and refreshed.
So listen folks, keep a look out for those synchronicities and coincidences in your life. And um, I'm going to love you and leave you. And please God, you have a fantastic day. Enjoy your day, whatever you're doing. And take that bit of whatever it is that you've just connected to. No one can take that from you. Look after yourselves, folks. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. God bless. Thanks very much. Bye.